This is what great Cantonese food looks like. Since our Teochew episode was a hit, we invited Gary back to explore cuisine from the third largest dialect group in Singapore, Cantonese. Food Finders! Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Food Finders. And today, a little special treat. Since you guys liked the Teochew episode so much, we decided we're gonna do another attempt at the third largest dialect group in Singapore, Cantonese cuisine. Have you been to Hong Kong, Gary? Uh, yes, I have been to Hong Kong. Do you see any difference or service or quality? Which is worse? I want to say Singapore only because I expect it from Hong Kong, you know? No, objectively. <laughs> objectively, yes. Hong Kong is worse. People in Hong Kong, they don't have a spectrum of politeness. What do you think defines Cantonese food? I think Cantonese food focuses on elegance, sophistication. Where did Cantonese cuisine originate from? Hong Kong. The province of Canto. Which is not in Hong Kong. <laughs> Damn. Oh shit. So most of the dishes originate from Guangzhou, Chaosan and Shunte. Where is the Cantonese enclave in Singapore? I was gonna say Geylang, just because I know Geylang. So it was Kreta Ayer. A lot of the Cantonese tradesmen occupied shop houses at uh, Temple Street, Pagoda Street, basically Chinatown. Oh, oh that would make sense, hence Chinatown. Like Chinatown, <laughs> yeah, Cantonese. Oh. Yeah, definitely. There's all these people on the comments like, wow, this guy got, wow, a thick face, huh? Well, like try ex Singaporean, but like, well, it's like making a living off this. I don't make a living off this, guys. Like, there's no way. To feed our starving talents, videographers and editors, we have a quick message from our sponsor. Are you looking to take your investment to the next level? You can try trading with a reliable, globally regulated broker, Okta Trading App. With Okta, you can trade on more than 300 trading assets with absolutely no commissions. Seth, is that you in the ad? Yes, it's me. It's not AI. If you think that you need a big computer screen for trading, you are wrong. With Okta user-friendly mobile trading app, you have the flexibility to trade whenever and wherever it suits you. Why are there so many influencers promoting this app? It's a sponsorship campaign. Being globally regulated, Okta guarantees your funds are secure and accessible when you need them. As an award winner for the fastest withdrawals in Singapore 2023, Okta allows you to withdraw via Visa in less than 49 minutes and deposit in one minute. Are you a financial expert? No, but I do invest. Now download the Okta trading app via the link under the video or scan this QR code and start trading with zero commission. Use our promo code SEFI100 to double your deposit. For example, deposit $500 and get $1,000 for trading. And back to Food Finders. Okay, we are here at the very, very first location, Intercontinental Singapore. Man Fu Yen, very high class, fine dining quality as I'm told. Today's episode does consist of three different sponsored restaurants. So of course we do have certain things that we do have to say. Man Fu Yen. Lauded by Singapore Tatler as one of Singapore's best Chinese restaurants, Man Fu Yen is a stalwart in the Cantonese fine dining scene in Singapore. Very demure, very mindful. Very demure, very mindful. All right, guys, we are here with executive chef. What makes Cantonese cuisine Cantonese? Cantonese we call warm. That means uh, not too salty, and then uh. the taste that uh, everyone can accept. Like Sichuan cuisine, uh, they, they are very powerful, uh, very spicy. Your tongue will become numb. Teochew side, they're near to the sea. So a lot of seafood, you seafood. can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Teochew steam. What's a very simple tip when it comes to Cantonese style cuisine? If someone's going to try it at home? Always cooking with your heart and love. Try not to put too strong taste. Nong yi ba ha. And when you eat, you can remember. Sick yun fan chan mei. And can you tell me a little bit about the dishes that I'll be trying later on? I will show you the best abalone in Singapore. <laughs> and also, how to make it raw glutinous rice and become cooked glutinous rice within three minutes. So, first of all, we have our abalone. They use 45 days to make it dry and keep in the good temperature storage for more than, more than three years. Then cook with uh, seven days. So, basically, how I do, right? I will soak in the water, in the cold water, and put inside uh, a chiller. Every day, change water for five to six days and then cook for 48 hours. Braise. Braise for 36 hours. After that, infuse with Chinese uh, pork cured meat. Slow cook for another 12 hours. And then the cost itself very high. One kg about 2,000 800. This side, one kg lovely have uh, 13 to 14 numbers. 13 to 14 pieces. Because I know today you're coming, then I prepare the best for you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. That doesn't ever happen. Yeah. The next one is um, bird nets. The master stock. We infuse with crab roll. A crab roll? Yeah, crab roll. 
So you can see the colors, right? And then when you eat, right, you have to stir it first, combine everything, then eat. Okay, the third dish, right? Cantonese star, Iberico pork char siu. I infuse your apple wood smoke to bring it more fragrant. Two pieces. Two pieces, just nice. <laughs> <laughs> Cost itself very high. So we did a quick calculation, and this piece of abalone, two hundred and eighty-eight dollars per person for this braised Australian ten hit shulong half abalone with South Africa fish maw. Half abalone, almost three hundred dollars. Insane. Is it seven days? There is no starch in this sauce. It is just pure meat bone broth, just cooked down to its. Gelatinous. This bite is at least fifty dollars. <laughs> Back end taste to it, which is a little bit more seafoody, and it's got like a very hard coating around the abalone. That's got a little bit more distinctive flavor. At the end of the day, it's got the texture of abalone, and it's just a massive, massive piece of abalone. The biggest one I've ever eaten is a whole abalone. It's about that that size. But this is a half one, and it's bigger than the biggest abalone I've ever had. The sauce itself, it's got like that meat essence, but it's not overpowering. It's just like pure natural flavor of the ingredients. Oh, it's really soft. Oh, it's really soft. I feel that's like a really texture thing. The Flavor is not as pungent as your typical deep fried fish maw. But once you eat it, it just melts in your mouth, and then it's very it like sticks and coats uh, your entire mouth. Okay, and this is the so this is the braised Sarawak bird snack. Yes. I forgot to, to, to say about the abalone. Just pop here, then cut in the middle. Cut in the middle. One okay. Time, one time more. Okay, so this is how you apparently know if the abalone is high quality or not. Poke it in the middle, and then just be able to cut through it. All right, I mean, okay, let's just try it again. I definitely get the chewy at the bit, and then once you get the piece smaller, then it, it has got a little bit of a starchiness. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Okay, Thank you. Let's move on to the next one. Yeah, so this is the braised Sarawak bird's nest with crab meat, crab roll, silver sprout, Chinese cured meat. Right off the bat, that bird nest is just covering nice chunky bits of crab and this uh, silver sprouts, which basically I think is just tauge la. It's very natural. It's not quite the same as shark fin soup. The texture is very much similar to shark fin soup, but the flavors are slightly different. It's got more of a depth to it. When it comes to the actual bird nest, it's a lot softer. It's almost jelly-like, and it just melts in your mouth. I like that they show and give you like whole chunks of crab, having it all mixed together. The actual soup itself is like, it's really thick, really, really thick. The two-piece chasu. This is both what I like and sometimes dislike about fine dining. Just look at the glistening on that. Oh, oh. It's nice. It's very fatty. There's a hint of that smokiness at the very top when you eat it. It's like more in the nose. And in fact, it's just a beautiful pork. Very good. It still tastes like chasu though. This is why sometimes maybe I don't get to go to fine dining places. <laughs> very demure, very mindful. From what I know from fine dining, it's more about like the chef's journey in making the stuff, right? Just far more attention into the details. Like if chef didn't tell me about the process of this, I just wouldn't know. And it would be hard to appreciate as well. All right, now we got the live station. So I want to introduce to you um, three minutes from uh, raw rice and then become a cooked rice. Do you have the timer? Yeah. Go. Go. All right. So, stir fry the lap chong. Yeah. Mushroom, go in. Okay. Okay, now the sauce. Oh, yeah. Now we put uh, asparagus. Asparagus. Pork lard. Yeah. Q Tony's. Uh. Fried garlic. Yeah. So right now I will slow slow cook it to, to get the crispy rice. Now we enhance with some uh, Chinese wine. Ooh. Three minutes. Three minutes. Yes. Rice cook already. So can serve already. Can serve already. Yeah. Uh. So 
So in, in this is uh, two types of lap chong, right? Buta lap chong. Kuru buta. Kuru buta yes. lap chong. The other type is uh, goose liver. Goose okay. liver. Goose liver. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's putting the lap chong in first, right? To like fry it and fry the fat and flavor out of the lap chong first. And then when you put in the rice and then you fry it all in, then it permeates through the entire dish. When you eat this, the first thing you're gonna get is that like lap chongy scent. And then basically everything else is layers of texture. As a whole, they mingle, but if you eat them individually, you can taste the individual mushroom flavor, the crunchiness of the asparagus. I, I, I know this is probably like the cheapest of the, the bunch, to make, but this just warms the soul, you know? I think it's an experience. It's an expensive experience. One that I probably cannot afford. Yeah, you are, Gary. But here I am. Aren't you grateful to be Seth on the show? Seth Food Finders. <laughs> Thank you, Seth. So we're here at the second location, Joyden. It's a Singaporean-based company, or a Singaporean-owned, grown company, but the chef is Cantonese. This location is all about Cantonese food, where they focus on fresh ingredients, quality ingredients, seasonal special and yeah, just, you know, high qualityness. I think I hear some sizzling coming already. First dish, we have fish maw and tiger prawns. You wanna open it up? Is it hot? Chef hands, oh that's <laughs> hot. Looks good, looks good. The prawns look very fresh. I like the fact that they butterfly them, so that's just extra effort. The noodle pull. I actually don't remember much Cantonese cuisine having glass noodles though. Shh, Seth. Normally, I'm not a massive like fish maw fan. I do know it makes a lot of uh, stock or like Chinese style soup dishes really, really tasty. The exo sauce is nice. The texture of this fish maw, because I think it's like in this like thin slice style, it kind of reminds me of like bean curd, which is nice. And it's not, not like super fishy, which is really good. Mm. Prawns are very fresh. Got that bounce. There's no shells. Everything is gone. So it's just like really easy to eat. It's not nope. frozen, is it? It's not frozen. Because usually when it's frozen, it's got a, a different texture to it. So this tastes pretty fresh. Mm. That glass noodle is so good. The sauce is really strong. Very like that soy saucy thickness to it. And then the XO, you can really taste like that dried scallop. The Cantonese style is very, very kind, very demure, very respectful. Hence also why I'm dressed like this today. <laughs> Anyways, the glass noodle is, I think, exceptionally good. Packed full of flavor, it's got just a little bit of spice, and you got a lot of that dry scallop flavor that's just permeating that glass noodle. Next, we have... I've never seen this before. So this is the handmade seafood bean curd with slow braised Shanghai baby cabbage. Mm, it's very clean, very soft and delicate on the inside. It's got that seafood essence. You know, sometimes you have like chunks of seafood, like either a little bit of squid. You don't really get that chunkiness. It's just a smooth seafood flavor inside. And then when it's combined with the sauce, very elegant dish. Okay, onto the chicken. Sha Kyung, salt poached farm chicken. Breast meat is feeling very, very succulent already. I can tell. We'll get some of the sauce. Okay, and then we have the ginger, ginger sauce. That's good. You can definitely, definitely taste that slight salt in the chicken meat. As in, it's like it permeates the meat. I ate the breast piece, and the breast piece normally is the hardest part to keep moist, but this, very tender. If you love chicken rice, but want something different, slightly different, this is gonna be a dish for you. I, I don't know what this is. I assume it's a noodle dish. Usually when you have just like the yolk on top, it's like some moon moonlight. It's the Jordan Signature Moonlight Rice Vermicelli with egg white and scallop blanc. Okay, and then we're just gonna do a little mixy mix. Smells good. Mm. Good amount of flavor. I actually thought that would be lighter. I think the vinegar really cuts through, elevates a little bit to be fair. Again, it's, it's a very clean tasting dish, but it has a lot of flavor. The noodles aren't overcooked. They still got a little bit of bite to it. The liao, it's just clean. Moonlight rice vermicelli. Actually very good. 
very demure. That looks good. It's a very nice piece, like the primo cut piece of rib here. Mmm. Oh, damn. Oh, damn. All right, we're on to something here. That one's probably more exciting. I mean, the rest are really good, but this one's really unique. It looks amazing and it smells great. So this is the Cha Grill Mandarin Peel Pork Ribs. This pork rib, it's clean, but quite layered in terms of flavor profile. You got that char bit, and then the mandarin peel really comes out in this one. And it's not just like any orange flavor. It, it really does taste mandarin-y. Little bit of that orange bitterness to it. The texture, really, really good. And then you got a good mix of pure meat and the fatty bits. This looks very nice. Oh, we got some tofu at the bottom, goji berries. All right, so we're here at uh, a more seasonal dish that we specially ordered. This is the homemade fish dumpling with winter melon in superior tea broth as part of their tea festival season. You can definitely tell there's like a tea essence to the smell of this. Very good, very Q. The soup is very clean, as in it's like, it's not even salty. It's almost more tea than it is soup, which is unique. I can see people eating this in like a very cold day that rejuvenates the body, but doesn't bog it down because it is, it is very clean. So the dumpling has a lot of flavor. It's a little bit saltier. And then as soon as you drink the tea or the soup, it just washes it all away. So it's very clean, very unique. That's it for Joy Den. Although it is a sponsored piece of content, but I can say and now confirm now that I've actually had it everything and try everything. Very good. Fresh, unique, high quality. And yeah, actually very surprising. Is this actually more traditional or authentic Cantonese cuisine? Or is it more of uh, using the Cantonese cooking methodology to then recreate unique dishes? Because I feel it is Cantonese style, but I can't confirm if it's authentic Cantonese. But everything is delicious. Good job. Joy Den. Here we are at the third location, Sing Cuisine here at the Holiday Inn. This place has been around for about 30 years and later on we'll be talking with head chef, Mr. Kwan, who is originally from Hong Kong and Cantonese himself, only speaks Cantonese from what I've been told. So here they focus on premium ingredients, a modern take of Cantonese cuisine, handmade dim sums, and also they do have private dining areas for more intimate settings, which, you know, those are always nice. Anyways, we are gonna have a chance to talk to Mr. Kwan. Let's go. Here with me is Chef Guan. How, how do you describe Cantonese cuisine. Guangdong food,呢，对于我哋嚟讲诶，食香味啦，潮州菜呢，佢就比较清同埋鲜为主。我哋广东菜呢，比较注重浓诶国气啊，同埋嗰个摆设啊。How long have you been working at Sing? 十年前呢，就喺个呢度做，都系做行政总总餐嘅总厨啦。咁我今日之后啊，就做咗差唔多五年到，去Indochina啊、台湾啊，翻翻嚟呢度八个月啦，差唔多。Chef Guan, I look forward to trying your dishes. Yeah. Okay. Time you time to go cook now. <laughs> We're about to have the next food here, but before then, we do have a couple of things to say. IHG One Reward members who dine at Sing Cuisine Chinese Restaurant will enjoy 20% off a la carte orders and earn IHG One Reward points. Chris Flyer members will also enjoy 20% off a la carte dishes when you pay with your credit card to earn Chris Pay Miles or when you pay using your Chris Pay Miles. Okay, and now we're back. First of all, I want to mention that this is Irish duck. That is the Wagyu of ducks. And then over here we have a barico pork chop with like a black truffle and sesame sauce. Your black pepper beef cubes with A4 Wagyu beef and also with a longan, which is quite unique. Sea perch with miso. Uh, let's try the duck first. Irish duck is the duck. To have. There's not much to say. It's it's exactly how you would think. Slightly better than normal because it is the Irish duck. The skin crispy on the outside. I do think the sauce is quite different though. It's a lot waterier. It's savory, it's salty, it adds the flavor, the additional flavor, but not too much. It doesn't coat the whole uh, duck in the sauce. So this is miso. Ooh, that's decadent. There's a little bit of sauce in there. And then there's like a glaze type of like mayo-y, mayo miso. Like you can see it slightly on top. So the fish is like super, super tender, just melts away. And then there's like that miso glaze on top. Two types of sauces. One is this, 
kind of like a demi-glaze. And then there's a sauce that is just cross-hatched, poured on top of everything. A, a creamy, sweet flavor. So the combination of all that and then the tobiko on top gives out that crunch. Oh, so soft already. Oh, that's really soft. Whoa, the meat is crazy soft. Like it's cooked quite medium rare. It's really, 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 really soft. It's a Chinese like velveting thing, yeah, like velveting, yeah. So they velveted the wagyu, so that made it even more like. Do you think they velveted? I was, I was wondering. I was like, I've never had it this soft before because it's, it's not normally this soft, even at wagyu levels, right? It's just crazy soft, man. And the longan as a side to the whole dish, it's nice because it adds a little bit of that fruity sweetness to it. So it's a good balance, actually. It's not overpoweringly peppery. And then the truffle pork chop. Tender, flavorful, not offensive. Like, you know when you bring like a foreigner or a ang ma or a white person to go eat some of the more intense Chinese stuff? Some can be just too much. I think this is like a very safe overall type of food, super high quality. I can't confirm whether they have velveted it or not, uh, the meats, but they do feel extra tender, which leads me to believe they've done this uh, very common Cantonese style or trick, which is um, adding a bit of baking soda and velveting the meat a little bit to, to give it that tenderness, that extra tenderness. Here's a fun fact, Gary. What do you think wonton means? I don't know. Wonton, what does wonton mean? I didn't know there was a meaning. The wonton means Swallowing cloud, wonton appears to be floating in the soup when you have it in the soup. So it's like floating, so it's like a. Yeah. And it does look a little bit like clouds. Kinda looks, yeah, kind of looks like a cloud as yeah, well. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. It's basically what you would expect from a high quality Cantonese restaurant, but also unique because they've added different varieties of flavors into a very common traditional style Hong Kong or Cantonese cuisine. Compared to the other two, these are more traditional foods or the traditional menu items that you would expect from a Cantonese restaurant, but slightly different. And that brings us to the end of today's episode. I think something that I've noticed across all of them is the fact there is this real attention to detail. Everything that was served was cut properly. It was cooked with finesse and then it was also plated properly. And then you have different styles and qualities of cooking. So a good use of steaming, a good use of making sauces or sauteing or braising. I think my favorite one today, which was quite surprising actually, was Joyden, Mandarin peel pork rib. That one was just something I've never had before. It surprised me. Even though today's episode was sponsored, all of them came through with what they preached about themselves, which isn't always the case all the time with sponsorship videos like this. Like and subscribe to the channel. Follow Gary as well. He's, he's close to 1,000, was it? So close. We're eight away from cracking four eight. digits. Let us know if you have any other recommendations or themes that you would like us to cover. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Woo.